Hi, it's Jim Welninski, and this is actually by request. I got a comment and an email from one of you regarding dehazing your photos. Somebody had gone on a trip, and of course, you know, when you're on a trip, the weather you get is the weather you get. It's not like you can wait or come back the next day or come back the next week. And so you shoot anyway. And this person came back. And of course, the photos were all just foggy and hazy and unusable. And the dehaze control in uh, the develop module here didn't quite do it, wasn't quite up to the task. And so he wondered what he could do about it. This photograph was taken in Chicago. And in Chicago, it doesn't get much worse than this. This was taken on a super, super foggy and rainy day. And on top of that, we were up in the clouds, actually, because we were about 50 floors up when this was shot. So this is really bad. And you can see there's no detail in the sky. Um, I have no local contrast, nothing. It's just horrible. So maybe I would normally think that this is just kind of a throwaway photo. Well, not so fast. The dehaze control here actually doesn't do a bad job. Um, it brings back some of this detail and clears up the photo some. But what you can see is that my midtone contrast starts to fall apart. Now the answer to this is not to add more contrast back in because that doesn't repair my midtone contrast. What I really need to do here is bring the exposure down. Not that far, just a little bit. And you know, then I can do my dehazing. In this case, what I would actually do is bring the exposure down first and kind of plant my histogram in the middle of the histogram graph and then do my dehaze. And now I can bring my exposure back up, watching my histogram, making sure that I'm not pushing things too hard. So this doesn't do a bad job. And uh, I'm gonna show you how to do this manually. And the method I'm gonna give you gives you greater flexibility and more options. So I'm gonna reset this photo. Now actually what I'm going to do for this is make the problem worse initially and that's counterintuitive but you're going to see why in a moment. I'm going to bring the exposure down and I'm going to plant my histogram firmly in the center of the histogram graph. Then I'm going to pull all the contrast out of it. Now I want you to watch what happens to the histogram here. It's going to get narrower. Okay? And I'm going to pull my histogram down even more so that it's nice and centered. Now, why am I doing this? Because the next step, I'm going to add all of that contrast back. And I want to be able to have as much control over that contrast that I'm adding in as possible. So I'm stripping all of the contrast out here. So now we're going to go over into the effects module. And I'm going to add a tone enhancer. Now, this is where blend modes become your friend. If I click on my little gear icon up here, and I change the blend mode to something like soft light, look what happens. So a lot of that contrast comes back. This is starting to look good. It's not quite there yet, but we're getting there. So I can also change the blend mode to overlay, which is going to be a little more aggressive than soft light. And that's better, but it's still not quite there. Well, there's no rule that says I can't add another tone enhancer, right? And do the same thing again. And if I do the same thing again, now I've got the same effect stacked on top of each other, which effectively doubles the effect, right? So obviously that's way too much. So I might pull the opacity back here a little bit, but probably I'm going to add another filter and I can add a tone enhancer here. And I can bring my shadows up here and bring my blacks up here. Just something like that and now I can pull my highlights down and now I've got something that's really good so what did this look like when I started well it looked like that and now it looks like that and you can see that my histogram looks really solid I've got enough room on both the left and right sides of the histogram which adheres to my rule about preparing a raw file for an edit so if I want to add more shadow add more highlight I have space to do it now, why did I add a tone enhancer up here rather than controlling the tone down in these two tone enhancers? Because these two are just for contrast. I want to control the tone of the whole image, and I'm going to do it with a separate tone enhancer. 
if I can start to control tone here, I'm only control, controlling the tone after this blend mode is added. And that's not what I want. I want the blend modes to be added first, and then I want to control the tone. So I could, you know, bring this exposure up a little bit maybe. And now I might even add a little bit of contrast to this. And that looks pretty good. So now I have a usable photo. Again, I think it's important for you to understand what's being done with some of these automated processes. A, it's going to help you if the automated process either isn't available to you or fails you. And B, it gives you insight into how all this stuff works. And you gain a little piece of knowledge here. And you gain a little piece of knowledge somewhere else. And you gain a little piece of knowledge by doing something else manually. And pretty soon you put all those little pieces together and you really understand how the software works, and then you can leverage that in your own post-processing. This is Jim Walnitsky. I hope you found this helpful. Be creative, have fun, and I'll see you next time.